Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, and this is... Seth V. Coming at you from the Knife Center. And if you've ever wondered what goes into picking out our Knife Center exclusives, stick around right here for a little peek behind the scenes. All right, so we've actually got three new exclusives dropping today. They're gonna to be on this video, and that's because of part of the way uh, these exclusives come together. We, you know, agree to contracts with various companies over time, and sometimes they just stack up like this because, you know, delivery dates are always estimates. So as much as we'd like to plan all of these out to the letter, sometimes that doesn't happen. But there's, to the point though, there's a lot of different ways uh, some of our exclusives come about. Sometimes we're presented with some good opportunities that we're able to take advantage of. But my favorite things that we get to do are when we actually kind of are able to help create something new for the knife community. Mm -hmm. Something that doesn't quite exist uh, in exactly the right way, by our opinion, or something that doesn't exist at all. And that's where this first knife comes in. Now I showed this to you in last week's New Knives of the Week video. This is our Boker Barlow Flipper. But since I've already talked about it, I'm gonna let Seth talk about this one a <laughs> little bit. Um, take it away, my friend. Sure, yeah. Uh, this is a modern, Barlow, I guess that's how I would put it. The, the silhouette, except for the flipper tab, is almost identical to the Barlow that Boker has mm -hmm. been making. Yeah, some people were taking exception that, you know, without the, the bolster style, it can't mm -hmm. really be a Barlow, but that is where the name comes from in this case because it is their Barlow Prime, I think. Yeah. Um, is this profile. Yeah, we wanted to call it a Barlow because I still think that's what it represents in spirit, and mm -hmm. also to acknowledge the fact that, I mean, we, we started from a tracing of Booker's yeah. <laughs> Barlow with this. Um, so it's very true to the way they're making their slip joints, um, down to the fact that this is also a non-locking knife. It has a double detent system, but that allows it to work in a very modern way. It flips open and it even flips closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something that we have been working with Boker on for years. Quite a bit, yeah. It's hard to, like, it all feels like such a long time at this point, so I'm not sure exactly when this started. But I think part of the impetus was, um, you in, in particular have always had this idea of, you know, classic slip joint patterns being made in a more modern way while still staying true to the roots. And this was like before uh, Jack Wolf knives kind of burst onto the scene. Seth was already kind of clued into that. Yeah, yeah. It felt like there was a hole in the market where all of these great time-tested proven patterns were out there in the form of slip joints. They were freely shared mm -hmm. for, in, a, in a very friendly, interesting way between mm -hmm. companies. That was always one of the things I thought was uh, very Everyone's got a stockman, everyone's got a trapper. Yeah, yeah, and nobody kind of accused anyone else of, of copying their knives because it was just assumed that these knives are sort of shared. They kind of pre-exist any one specific brand. Mm -hmm. So every brand does their different take on a Barlow or their take on a Stockman. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought that was cool and it was something I thought was maybe missing a little bit from um, the, uh, the way the modern knife industry works. Or at least the modern patterns go. Yeah, yeah at yeah. least the way we think about them. Modern today. construction, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but that's that's kind of where what led us to start thinking about Barlow mm -hmm. for this project because we're we're always thinking like, what cool can we do with yeah. the companies we like to work with? Um, so that all these ideas kind of stew together and start to come to the top. I think we combined that inclination from you with the success we've had with our artisan cutlery non-locking Archeo models, yeah, um, which we were always happy to be able to provide, in addition to just being a cool pattern for anyone who wants the convenient modern conveniences that come with a modernly made knife, like the pocket clip, like the flipping, but didn't want to deal with a lock. In addition to those folks, there are plenty of folks that for one reason or another can't carry a locking blade, Yeah, um, especially to a lot of our, our European customer base. Not every country over there, of course, but you know, we want to make things that the knife community needs, or at least we think the knife community deserves to have an option for. Mm -hmm. And that's why we loved having, we still have that uh, small Archeo non-locking as an exclusive, and that's why we pursued this as well. Yeah, yeah. Having it be a flipper gives you 
a little bit of extra safety in the non-locking mechanism too. I mean, mm -hmm. that is the biggest difference from the classic Barlow pattern yeah. here is this, is this little flipper st sticking out. And uh, yeah, as long as you keep your finger kind of braced against it and the jimping really helps with that. Yeah, the jimping really is kind of optimized yeah. for pushing against it, I would say. Yeah, you, you can probably see on camera how hard I'm actually pushing in there. It's really grabbing my thumb. But it gives you a lot of security, um, a feeling of confidence, even though this knife is not locking. Uh, you can feel that blade stay in place as you're using it. Mm -hmm. I think out of all the traditional knife patterns that we were looking through, we landed on the Barlow because it had the most potential to fulfill that single pocket knife role that um, uh, people are shopping for today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I think the multi-blade slip joints aren't as popular as they were um, since the advent of particle metallurgy because now you can get so much more edge retention out of a single, out of a single blade. blade. Yeah, the need for backups on a single knife uh, starts to feel a little anachronistic. And then also from a practical standpoint, you know, how do you do a multi-blade as a modern style knife? Yeah, or, start to have like flippers on either right. end. Or but then you knows. start to get down to single blade patterns and what still remains iconic yep. in that format. And I mean, Barlow's. Barlow's number one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's got my favorite style of deep carry pocket glove too. This was a uh, tricky part of the design to work out. Um, we went through- a Couple prototypes. Couple prototypes. Yeah. But what we landed on is so nice. Yeah. I, I remember the first time I put this in my pocket, I was like, I just sighed a sigh of relief. It was so <laughs> Sometimes nice. Sometimes they just work so yeah. well. It's reversible, it's truly deep carry. Single fastener. Single fastener, it works well. It holds it in quite nicely, but it's easy to get clipped in and clipped out of the pocket. It, it just, it's a winner. Yeah. yeah. We haven't talked about the price or the steel on it too. We went with 20 CV mm -hmm. for the steel and we were actually playing around with a couple options too. You know, folks who know Boker know they have factories all across the world. So we actually had this priced out in a couple of different form factors. Uh, right. Super high end. Super high end versions, mm -hmm. uh, including like a titanium and M390 version at one point. But we got 20 CV here, same kind of edge retention as your M390, black G10 to keep it affordable. Yep. 90 bucks the, for this knife right here. The price point I think was really- Or is it 80 bucks? What did we do? Uh, 89.95. So it's 90 bucks. 90 bucks. Yeah, the price point. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the price point is why we landed on this version. I mean, the, the blade steel is about as high end as it gets these days, 20 CV. Without is, getting into the real exotic stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 20 CV is top tier stuff and 90 bucks is not a top tier price. No. So that was a pretty sweet feature and, uh, yeah, I think as a, like a, as a gentleman's folder, as a non-locking knife that you're gonna, I don't know, uh, have, as, have as your church knife, it's just. Or even just your, your mainstay EDC too, quite honestly. I mean, it's a three inch blade of 20 CV. You can do mm -hmm. a lot with that. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is a time where we get to say thank you to Boker for entertaining our crazy ideas that, uh, that we sent your way. Yeah. Cause you know, this, this was us coming to them with an idea, which Sometimes it doesn't always work that way. And sometimes companies don't have that kind of bandwidth to be able to take on a project like this. Yeah. So thank you, Boker. Yeah, that, it was really cool of them. They really stuck with us through that endless email thread. Yeah, it, it, was, <laughs> it, it was quite a few years. This might've started back in 2020 even, mm -hmm. the gestation of this, but there you go. Next one is, is kind of a similar, along similar lines. This is one of the first of the three exclusives dropping today. Here, I'll hand you the black washed version. This is one of the first of the uh, three exclusives dropping today. This is the Kershaw Mini Skyline, which is a knife center exclusive. And this one was cool. Um, took a little bit for us to get, get here too, but we had an opportunity. Uh, we knew that Kershaw had some capacity in their overseas factories that they were looking for projects to fill it up with. And so we started thinking, what could we do that wasn't just another knife? What was something that would be cool to see and through Seth and I kind of brainstorming and talking about this stuff, we arrived at the idea of, well, what if we bring back the Skyline in a certain form? But, you know, the Skyline's always been an American made knife, so we didn't want to kind of just lift it off and take it over there. That didn't Recreate feel right. It. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that didn't yeah. feel right. So we tweaked it a little bit to justify it being, you know, a different model. 
change it up, sub three inch blade, it's just under that three inch mark, D2 steel for very good edge retention, and a few other tweaks, which I'll let, which I'll let Seth get to here in a minute. And the price on this is just 45 bucks. Yeah. Very, very cool. So. Cheaper than the original Skyline, I think, even yeah. all these years later. Yeah, I think those were, when they were discontinued, at least we're going for like 50 or 55, somewhere in that, in that ballpark. And we basically took the things we liked about the original Skyline, that being the shape, and tweaked it a little bit to kind of modernize it, update it a little bit. Yeah, the, the biggest difference if you've had a Skyline, they've been discontinued long enough now that I don't know how many people really remember the original. Shout out in the comments if you do, because it was definitely like a knife guy choice back and, in the day. And for a long time, it was like a, in a way it was kind of like, some might say the Civivi Elementum of its day, yeah. Like the, the, the Elementum today kind of fulfills a similar niche and we the were trying go -to to, flipper. And we were trying to get back to that with, yes. with this version. Uh, the flipping action is so good. The yes. original Skylines, they flipped, but they didn't always flip great. And they kind of required a bit of, uh, I don't know, Attention fin finger pain. preparation. Yeah, 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 yeah. These ones, they just kick out. Um, and that's KVT ball bearings instead of washers is the biggest difference there. Yes. Although, so. if you uh, look closely, actually, I'm going to hold up the stonewashed yeah. version. If you look closely, you'll notice that we kept a big part of the original Skylon's DNA, which is the single liner. Uh, and I remember kind of uh, uh, defending the single liner passionately yeah. if you were talking about it. Because I really do think it's a, a cool look. It's maybe a bit of a throwback at this point, but it's such a smart design decision because you know, the liners used for the locking mechanism, it's a mm -hmm. liner lock, and it doesn't need to be on that other side necessarily for a I mean, blade G of this size. G10 has enough rigidity for this size, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a little race around the, the pivot for the ball bearings to ride in, but other than that, you don't need metal mm -hmm. on that other mm -hmm. side, and it allows this knife to stay super light. Uh, you know, the ba the balance is great, and it just has a cool look like the original. Yeah. Oh, and it flips so And it good. flips so good. The, the other tweak we wanted to make uh, in the transition here was the pocket clip system. Yep. The original, of course, was always tipped down uh, with a just a standard kind of flat clip. Well, we asked him to take the pocket clip from the Natrix, remember that model, and pop it on here in a tip-up fashion. So there you go. It's not com quite deep carry because you have a little bit of the... Uh, the tail end of the knife sticking up. It's pretty close. But it is it, it is the more preferred way that uh, most knives come these days in terms of clip configuration. And it's reversible too. You yeah. can uh, slip it on either side, which is very cool. Yeah, they popped some little threaded um, uh, uh, word? Holes. Holes. <laughs> well, they're not, they're inserts. That's the word I was talking Ah, about. yes, yes, yeah. yes. They popped some threaded inserts in here, so. Into yeah. the G10, yep. Yeah, still get to maintain that linerless construction and have an ambidextrous clip. Yep. In a way, this is kind of the same knife as the Barlow flipper here, just with a lock. In some ways, it's a three inch spear pointy, drop pointy blade. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're That, you know, it's more affordable. You, you could get two of these for the price of mm -hmm. one of these. But it is, you know, the way you describe this is just this being able to work as just that one pocket knife that people reach mm -hmm. for. This also, I think, sits really nicely in that kind of space at a $45 price. Absolutely. Yeah, the Skyline deserved another chance in the sun, and I'm I'm kind of proud we got to bring it back. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's an iconic part of Kershaw's lineup. I do think a lot of knife collectors remember it fondly, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I hope they'll give it a chance with the mini Skyline. It is sweet. It is very sweet. It is very sweet. All right, next up we've got something we'll kind of change tax a little bit to another way that some exclusives happen. And this is kind of a reaction to other things in the marketplace. We're gonna start before we talk about our Hogue Deca exclusive, which is relaunching today with something new. Ch check that out here in just a second. These knives started with our Battle Wash Bug Out mm -hmm. exclusive, which was, I still maintain the coolest, at, at the very least the coolest injection molded handled version straight from the factory. Of the bug out? Of, yeah. of the bug out family. Some may argue if the, the higher end versions are cooler or not, 
fine. That, that's a fair argument. But of all the uh, the grivery handled versions, this was by far the coolest. This is actually Thomas's. He still carries his day to day. Still. Which is why thumb studs are pretty janky by this point. Yeah, he battle washed the battle. <laughs> he did. <laughs> um, this started actually, Benchmade was trying out some new finish options mm -hmm. and brought us along for the ride. We had an opportunity with them. Uh, they were testing this thing out and we were able to secure the test run basically yeah. as our exclusive, which is really cool. It's it's red underneath and black over top. This one that Thomas has carried for a while, you can see is a little redder than they were mm -hmm. originally. The black is kind of wearing through. Yeah, the red's coming through, especially here where it's yeah. in his pocket. But you know, Benchmade decided that that finish wasn't something they wanted to keep doing going forward, which fair enough. I'm disappointed we couldn't keep it going, but you know, for one, one reason or another, it was uh, more trouble than it was worth for them to do it, which is too bad. They but, tried though. And, and no ill will towards Benchmade at all. Don't, don't take this as anything like that. So, you know, in, in our like, you know, throes of disappointment, <laughs> you know, morose and, mm -hmm. and bemoaning the loss of this, uh, this wonderful model, I thought, you know, what do we do next? Well, that's where the DECA came in. Mm -hmm. Long been considered a, uh, a bug out competitor. They were already doing their G-Mascus styled G10. Mm -hmm. So we thought- Something Hogue's been doing great for a long time. Yes, and but they weren't doing a red version. So it's like, hey, we could do a DECA kind of like our battle wash color scheme anyway. Mm -hmm. So we asked them and they said yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's how these got started. Um, yeah, this was a simple one. Yeah. <laughs> and it was simply a, a moment of that of like, well, that worked. Why don't we do this over here? And they said yes. Mm -hmm. And we love working with Hogue. They've always been really receptive to our ideas too, uh, including some stuff coming out soon, hopefully. Stuff, some more stuff we're working on uh, in the future too. But we got the two blade shapes. We've got stonewashed uh, coating here, which is launching today. The uh, black coated versions are coming back as well. Uh, and I think those are, we might have those later this week, actually. I'm oh, not, nice. I'm not sure about that. But started off with 20 CV with the, the G10 handles, G mask is whatever you want to call it. And then they came out with the injection molded versions with Magna Cut steel. And as we got to the kind of the bottom of our uh, last run of these, we said, we'd love the Magna Cut on the G10 too. So that's what we've got available today. Just a, uh, I almost said cosmetic, it's actually the opposite. Yeah. Just a, a non-cosmetic change from 20CV to Magna Cut, but with the same great g Mascus look. Oh man, Hogue is just They're so great to it. work They're with. They're killing it. They make a great knife. And this was one, I mean, the DECA, the DECA's cool. It's been, been very, <laughs> very successful too. Uh, you know, Alan Elishowitz design, their edges are phenomenal. I've, I still maintain, I think Hogue has the best factory edges out of the box of, of any company out there. You know, may, any company that's, you know, outside of the real exotic stuff, maybe some of the like Shiragoros or the, the Rocksteads might have better. But in terms of like the, the mostly attainable yeah. <laughs> companies out there, it's great stuff. For the price, I think there's a strong argument yeah. for that. And price on this is the same as the uh, as the 20 CV models at this point. So it's like 160 something, 170 starting around that. I actually forgot to look it up before we uh, started the video, uh, but it's they're at the, the same price uh, as the other G10 models right here now with the even more desirable steel. It looks like you're, you have something to say. No. Okay. No. Well, we don't. We can ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, feeling expedient. <laughs> so we're. I'm. I for one, I'm real happy to have these back in stock under. They're kind of this, this format. So I'm, I'm going to pick up one of the. Uh, I have I have a 20 CV version of the clip point. I'm going to grab one of the, the modified sheep's foot, not a reverse Tonto, Thomas. Uh, you're going to have one in your collection anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the blade shape on that Deca has. I don't even know if modified worn cliff or sheep's. <laughs> I can't even say it. It's it's a compound ground. Shard of thing. It's it's more of a shard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a Gerber shard, <laughs> non TM shard. It's a cool blade shape. It's a very cool blade. But shape. I'm very utilitarian. Really don't know what to call it. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I do. Yeah, you would. <laughs> Next up, um, the third exclusive dropping today is our fourth real steel Luna exclusive, and our first that is the locking version yeah. as well. This is one of our, our favorite patterns for, that Real Steel makes right now, and, mm -hmm. and there's a reason we keep doing new versions of it. 
I mean, look at the cleanliness of this. The Poltergeist Works design, it's so nice. Yeah, it, it reminds me a little bit of a Puko, just the way that the handle so smoothly transitions mm -hmm. into the blade. Um, I love a bit of jimping here right before the edge. Yeah, so no finger tab, but you still have that little bit of tactile feel to know exactly where your fingers mm -hmm. are. Yeah. Makes it feel quite safe, even though the handle is pretty slim and relatively short, although not undersized. I mean, you can yeah. see, I can comfortably get four fingers. I bet you, you can, <laughs> can too, at least it's in some about, grips. It's about a three and a half finger grip for me. And I could choke up right to the end of the uh, the jimping though and get all four of my fingers on there. So it, it definitely can support a bigger grip when you need to, but the blade is super controllable in size, two and three quarters of an inch. K110, which is Bowler's uh, highly precise version of D2. I don't know what better way to, to describe yeah. that I've steel. I've called it like brand name D2. In a, yeah. As opposed to yeah, the, yeah. Like your the knockoff D2. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and now the Luna Eco with the frame lock, gold stainless steel with the uh, matching deep carry clip. And that truly is a very deep carry clip right there. Yes. Movable thumb stud. You can uh, move this out to wherever it suits mm -hmm. your uh, opening method and the fat carbon. Dark matter, fat carbon on the front. That's dark matter, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you've hesitated on buying a Luna so far because you think slip joints aren't for you, the Eco gives you the lock, the same great pattern, and this exclusive version gives you some cool fat carbon at a great price. Yeah, good value here, 75 bucks for this, uh, which sits in between uh, the kind of two tiers of this model otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, you were looking at those earlier. They've got a higher end one with titanium and N690, and then a lower one with an all steel construction. So this has a steel frame lock on one side with the carbon fiber. So it still gives you a mix of strength and lightweight. Um, and then but with a the more K110. Look. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And no, it's I, really cool. I think I would actually take K110 over N690. Just saying. For you me, should, you will probably get more edge retention out of the K110 yeah. than the N690. Obviously, it's a, only a semi stainless steel, unlike N690, but mm -hmm. you know, keep your knife clean. <laughs> But it's it's funny too, like this started off as a slip joint with more modern vibes as opposed to a modern knife with mm. slip joint vibes. I didn't even think about that. Which is what the, mm -hmm. the Urban Trapper, or sorry, Urban Trapper, <laughs> the Marlow <laughs> Flipper. But both of these give you kind of a, even though this, the Luna Eco is very much a new school shape, it has some old school characteristics in terms of how it cuts, mm -hmm. uh, the size, the sliciness of it. So kind of two, Two things that converged and went opposite directions of each other here yeah. uh, in their evolution, which is pretty fun. Pretty fun. Anything more to say about that? No. I'm just, I'm glad we have an exclusive Luna with the lock now. Yeah. Because it really is worth, worth a shot. Yeah. It's really nice. Gearing up, let's, uh, let's get back to some things that we got to kind of foist upon the knife <laughs> community. And this is one that was near and dear to me. I've been banging the drum for this knife for years and we it took a while to get off the ground, uh, but we were able to make it happen. And that's the Ontario Rat 2 with micarta handles and black or satin blades. But the start of this was, man, the Rat 2 is so iconic at this point. It could, it could be in a Beat the Icon video, I think at this point, we haven't done that yet. But it is a hardworking, you know, vastly recognized knife for its value and what it is capable of. Mm -hmm but it sits alongside the rat fixed blades and the, the SE fit, which evolved later into the SE fixed blades. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why don't we have a rat folder that looks like the fixed blades? Yeah, they all had that same look, the micarta handles and the black coated blade, all of them Yeah, to a fault. Yeah, and even if they come out with other things later, they all start that way. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's definitely the look for the rat series. So I, like I wanted to have, like I, as a knife enthusiast, I mean, this, this is like when I first started here, mm -hmm. I was like, we need, we should do this. Cause I wanted one. Um, that's a cool thing about getting to be in the position that we're in here is sometimes if we want a thing and it makes, you know, business sense and it makes market sense, we might be able to make it happen sometimes. Yeah. This came from such a place of pure enthusiasm. I, I know from you especially, yeah. <laughs> as somebody who uh, loves all those hardworking, ultra tough rat fixed blades. I mean, the, the this style of, of thing, the the affordable, hardworking, outdoorsy stuff is like, that's what I cut my teeth on. Yeah, and who doesn't have a love in their heart for the kind of knives that just want 
to get beat up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that are just made to be used hard and unapologetically and at a price point where you feel justified in doing that. Yeah. And that's the important thing for this too. Like, I wanted this thing to exist, but if the money didn't make sense, yeah, we wouldn't have pursued it. But what we were able to do is, you know, fortunately the, the numbers worked out where we're able to sell these for 50 bucks, 49.95 for either the black or the satin version. And the Micarta is, is definitely a, a nice upgrade over the injection molded handle versions. You could get G10 versions, but those were only on the assisted openers. Uh, I think you could get carbon fiber. I don't know if you still can or not. But in terms of a tough, hardworking material, you get the Micarta, you get that extra durability. You don't have to worry about the, uh, the spring assist if you don't want to with this. Yeah. And you get that, that D2 blade steel as well. Really matches the character of the knife. It's like... There's a reason to make the fixed blades that way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I just, I for one, I'm so happy that we were able to make this a thing, you know? You, you mentioned one thing there, like, uh, or you were talking about it earlier, um, about how, like, maybe there's a reason, like, if you made one tweak, it would make yeah. a certain knife better, and then you'd buy it. I'll just throw this in as a quick aside. Our uh, exclusive Becker BK40 in D2 came about from that reason. It's like, okay, cool, great knife. Fills this, kind of the same niche as the Rat, but, you know, why, why not something different than OS 8? So we asked him for D2, and we were able to do this too. And yes, I realized that... Uh, we created our, our own competing product to our other exclusive <laughs> with our other exclusive there. That, that's a story for another day, but that's also a cool knife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes you have to stop and ask yourself, okay, I, even if I know this is a great knife, why haven't I bought it yet? Or why, why would people say no to a, a certain knife, even if it's a great design, you know, from a great team? Usually it's just one little mm -hmm. thing, or maybe one mm -hmm. or two little things. Sometimes the blade steel isn't quite the right match for the, I don't know, the price point or the, the product category. And, and maybe that, it's the handle material. Yeah. And that might be a little bit of hubris on our part, because for me it's, it's summed up in the, you know, that would be great if we could fix it. Yeah, well, and, and <laughs> I see those comments all the time from customers. It's like, oh, if this was in titanium and M390, then I'd buy it. Or, you know, if this had yeah. fat carbon, it, so, so we know that you guys are yeah. thinking along the same line sometimes. And sometimes it does matriculate through. It yeah, does, it we does listen. Through. We, we are listening. Um, in fact, this next one, uh, I don't know if it came from a, a specific um, customer comment, but based on the sales numbers and the, the sentiment around the Kaiser Gemini and the sentiment around Kaiser's button locks. Specifically the Cormorant mm -hmm. and its button lock, because it, it is different from some of their other button locks. Um, I think it was, this one was, if I'm remembering the, the history of this one right, it was, you know, we're, we're still, you know, maybe slight, slightly tapering at this point, but button lock mania is a thing. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking like, what, what else could we do cool as an exclusive that's new and, and different? And right. what's that one thing we could change? Yeah, well, I mean, maybe a little bit less that for me personally with this one in terms of its, its kind of inception, but it's a fair point. Mm -hmm. um, Kaiser had just come out with their Cormorant and that thing did gangbusters for such an, an ungainly looking knife, we'll call it that. Mm -hmm. But the, the, it's a great knife, don't get me wrong. I, I just, I like poking fun at it because it's not exactly a beautiful knife. It's got some fun to it. But everyone loved the, the button lock in there and it's all the stop pin and everything, the race is inside the blade. There's no external stop pin mm -hmm. here. It's kind of a self-contained little yeah. unit almost. So we knew they know how to do it. They knew, we knew they knew how to do the action right and decided, hey, wouldn't it be cool if the knife that kind of put Kaiser on the map, which was the Gemini, mm -hmm. uh, the titanium frame lock Gemini with S35VN blade steel, I, I still maintain it was that knife that did so well for them that knocked down the door for you know your Wee Knife Company and your Artisan Cutlery to yeah. kind of come in after them and, and explode the way they have. Right, wrong, or indifferent, I think that knife you know, broke down doors for, mm -hmm. for that segment of the manufacturing base. Why don't we take that knife with its history, that, you know, cool Ray Laconico design and ask him to put the Cormorant's button lock system on it. Yeah. 
And Kaiser are so game. They're so fun to work with. They, they said, said, hmm, maybe we can do that. Let's try. I think they said, Let, let's ask Ray and let's ask, oh, I'm forgetting the designer of the cormorants, the, the cormorant now. Because that, that's a, 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 a specific system mm -hmm. to to that designer as well. They said, well, let me, let's me let ask both of them and see what they think. And they were both like, yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. So Kaiser's like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> so we went through a few rounds of variations uh, of this, uh, got some prototypes in, but linen micarta with 4V, CPM 4V steel. It's been a winning combination on some of our other Kaiser exclusives. So we thought, hey, why not start with that? Yeah. Yeah, and it, You'd never know it wasn't originally designed with this mechanism because it works great. You know, they were able to, we went through a couple prototypes with this. Some of them had a bit more of an exposed, I don't want to call it tang. We were, like we were it, trying to get a front flipper thing to work with it as well. And it didn't it quite. It wasn't happening. It wasn't happening without, you know, dramatically changing the shape of the knife. And we didn't want to do that. Uh, we tried a flat scaled version as well, but the contoured version's where it's at. I mean, that's feels so good in the hand. Yeah. Yeah, these are fantastic. And they they just, they remind me of how great that original Gemini is. It still is, was. it's still available, yeah. 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 The button lock just it's gives it a little freshness. And it's so, so fast. It just use. works, Yeah, it's great. And the other thing that we've maintained with this one, like the original Gemini, there was value proposition to it. Cause mm -hmm. you know, that knife undercut a lot of the things with similar specs oh, yeah. uh, to it. At the time, you couldn't even get a frame lock, a titanium frame lock, for a reasonable price. Yeah, I mean, they just didn't exist. Yeah, 4V steel here is a, a definite kind of game changer. Maybe not game changer, but a, a force multiplier, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, for toughness and uh, edge retention in combination on a blade like this. 120 bucks, 119.95 for this, which is a really sweet place for it to be. And last but not least for today's video, no, we will leave a link in the description to all these knives and to our exclusives section on our website that shows these and more. Mm -hmm. But the last thing for today is another thing that kind of like the rat that we showed here, for me represents something that I wanted to exist mm -hmm. for very, very selfish reasons. <laughs> but MKM was game. Uh, they came to us and uh, you know they, they, they had the Malga, cool knife. Uh, it's the first kind of Swiss Army, or one of the only Swiss Army knife, quote unquote, competitors that went more premium with a premium blade steel, M390 on these. So you're not going to, you know, be competitive on price with the, uh, the Victorinox products, but for some of the other features. And it's a cool knife, but I'm, you know, I'm pretty particular in what I carry on my side as my, my backup to my main knife. And the Malga didn't, Malga 6 didn't quite have what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Well... These knives are made by Mercury for MKM, and they have a whole range of models, not made with M390, but they have the tooling for different implements. So with uh, with Igor's blessing over at MKM, we kind of had carte blanche to play with their bag of toys. Yeah. And we came out with, with the Malga, or the Campo 8 right here. What sets this apart from other Swiss Army products on the market is the tool set, the specific combination. We got the Phillips head on the back here. You can get some Real leverage, grip. you have yep. the T-handle. Corkscrew, of course. Which, there may have been some models in the past, but there's, as far as I can still tell, this size of Swiss Army knife, you can't get both of those tools on the back side at all. Like, it, it just doesn't exist on any models, at least that I'm aware of. No, same, same. So that was why I was like, hey, why don't we do that? Yeah, so I, the Phillips driver is a big kind of, um, uh, request from a lot of people. A lot of people want to have one on their multi-tool. The other big one. A lot of people complain when you have a corkscrew and said, well, I wish I had a Phillips head yeah. there instead. So there you go. You got the best of both worlds here. Cause the cool thing about a, a corkscrew as well is it fits the same spiral pattern as the uh, Victorinox accessories. Yeah. So you can put, put those little mini screw. A mini screwdriver, mm -hmm. the little fire starter, some of the other, there's aftermarket stuff you can find too. So you got a little you know, implement holder, even if you never screw a cork. Yeah. And scissors. Scissors. That's the other big one. Everybody yes. wants scissors. You got to have scissors on a on a Swiss Army style tool, in my opinion. Uh, just you, you got to have them. You got to have them. Yeah. And and I think we I think I actually suggested to MKM the name of this. You know, given its tool set, because we also gave it a a saw, mm -hmm. a wood saw, and then instead of the fork, 
Uh, it, it comes with a small serrated pen blade, just kind of adding the, uh, the you know, versatility of it. And to me, this is, this is in line with what I want my, you know, my Swiss Army style camping tool to be. So I said, why don't we call it Campo? Yeah. And the reason we didn't call it Malga is because of those two tools on the back side. Mm, the scales um, are not perfectly so, swappable. Yeah, they make Malga scale sets that you can buy that only one of those scales will fit this knife because they're not set up for uh, the, the two cutouts on each side for either one. So now we have the, uh, the Campo models and uh, I like to claim a little bit of credit for uh, the nomenclature there because as you saw in our uh, Blade Show coverage this past year with uh, MKM, they're coming out with some new Malga models uh, as, as regular line, line uh, products as well with slightly different tool sets, so. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we affected their catalog a little bit. <laughs> Camp was a good name. It, it, it's perfect for it with the wood saw and... And that's just the Italian word for camp or camping. Like, hmm. So it, it, was, it wasn't just a adding an O onto camp for any <laughs> reason, so. I think for a camping multi-tool, this covers about the widest variety of use cases I've ever seen in such a in this size of tool, like with the saw and the scissors and the Phillips driver, you got your can of bottle openers mm -hmm. and that addition of that little serrated pen blade, it just, it really broadens the scope of this thing. Yeah, yeah. Beyond just another, uh, I don't know, like an awl, which is just like a, a blade tip with nothing else. <laughs> and then, and there's there's legit reasons to have an awl. Um, oh, yeah. I like an know. awl. I like to poke stuff with it. Yeah, but... And that may be the one thing that if we were to do it again, maybe we would, we would tweak on this, but we, we didn't put in, haven't put an awl on the back of this. But in a way, this is kind of, you know, subtracting the awl, adding the, what's the word, Phillips screwdriver, however. This mm -hmm. is kind of like the Victorinox Huntsman in a way, which I have long recommended as a great, kind of all round, well-rounded Swiss Army knife for outdoor use. That's like one of my first uh, first go-tos that go to's there. The Farmer X is my other, and the Outrider, of course, as well. Those do get more expensive than the Huntsman. So it's really cool. Three different colors of micarta, green, natural, and black that we have right now. 135 bucks for these blades. And M390 blade. Yeah. M390 we we already even talked about that. I mean, M390. That's what put the Malga on, on the map, and we just added to that. Like, we didn't, we didn't mess with success right there. Mm -hmm. That's it. What do you, anything more to say, Seth? Anything more to share? No, well, I am just, here. no, no, no. Uh, I am, uh, I hope this was interesting. I thought it'd be fun to give a little bit of a insight into how all these exclusive products come to be. Um, you know, the fact that we had something like the mini Skyline dropping, I think was a great opportunity and to, how, to how, let you guys in and, and, and see how this happened. Yeah, and how cool to be a part of, of bringing something to you folks. And, and to me, that's what really excites me about all the exclusive stuff we do. It really is, like this sums it up well, the, the uh, Ontario Rat for me really sums it up, mm -hmm. is this isn't just a job for you and me. But for me and for, and for Seth, this is, we're, we're in this job because we're passionate about this stuff. And we work on the exclusive stuff because we are passionate about the knives and we want to see cool stuff happen. And we were lucky enough to be in the position to try and make cool stuff happen. Yeah. That's we that's We did this for it. you in a way, in a very real way, yeah. like sincerely. Yeah. hundred um, percent. I think a lot of people out there remember the skyline fondly are a little sad that it went away. <laughs> and well, th this, this and, and everything it's, it's, I mean, it's not just confined to this. Yeah. But I'm so glad to see this back in. in yeah. I'm so glad to see this exist. It's just really cool. But that, that is, that's why we do this stuff, is because we love knives and we love to see cool stuff. That, that, that I think is the sum up here. Yeah. More than anything else. Yeah. Um, well, great. If you want to get your hands on any of these, like I said, we'll have links to all these individual products in the description box. We'll also have a link to our exclusives page on the website where you can see all of the cool exclusives we have in stock at the moment, including some that aren't in stock, actually. Uh, but you can see them all there. And of course, if you're new to the site, we do have our Knife Rewards program. You don't have to sign up for anything extra. Basically what it means is when you buy one of these knives, you get to earn points to spend on your future ones. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. I'm Seth B. And that's Thomas behind the camera. And we're signing out. See you next time.